Okay, so tell us who you are and what we have going on here. Okay, so I'm Rohan, and for the past couple of semesters, I've been working on a homebrew computer called the Batcom 87, and I've been writing a small BIOS or operating system written in a language called Forth to allow me to run arbitrary code and interface with a video output, a PS2 keyboard input, and in the future, I want to build a file system that will reside on an emulated hard disk. So this project is built around this WC65 265SXB development board by Western Design Center. The core is a 65816 processor that was used in the Super Nintendo Entertainment System as well as the Apple IIgs. GS. It's an extension of the better known 6502. And we made some cards to output video using the TMS 9118, which is a variation of the better known TMS 9918 used in the ColecoVision and the Texas Instrument Home Computer. And we also have a sound chip here. So here we're using the video output card and Rohan has also hooked up a PS2 keyboard that he's reading via interrupts. Okay, show us some stuff. The most basic thing I can think of is like a hello world. So that's just typing directly into the screen, print out hello world. There's not much, not, not much else to it. I can write functions. So uh, here's a function that calculates a Fibonacci number like the first 10 Fibonacci numbers, I believe it would be something like this. One, one, push one, one into the stack. And then it gets from 10 to zero. It's been a while, so I don't remember the syntax and how I programmed this, but yeah. So from 10 to zero, do print out both things. So I'll do an over, or should I do do? So I'll print out the top number on the stack, and then I will I have to think about this. So you have two numbers in the stack. You duplicate the lower one to the top using over, add them together, and now you have the sum of the numbers and the second number, and then you swap them. And that should be it. You loop, and the last thing I'll do is I'll uh, just print out the remaining number and then a new line, and that's it, and I'll see if it works. Hey, there you go. Wow, okay, and you just did that for memory. And to be clear, you wrote a fourth interpreter compiler thing from scratch. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's you wrote about, this in six five eight one six assembly I language. I can show you the uh, the entire assembly file. It is a bunch of functions, all written in threaded code. So each function reads from the stack and and reads and writes from the stack to pass arguments and return values. And I just have too many of these that do all sorts of different things. That's amazing. With a total of like. 800 lines. That's an amazing accomplishment. And this is really interesting because most home computers of the time that were kind of targeting here with this retro inspired project were based on basic, but there was one, I can't remember which one that used fourth, I think. And I think there might've been one that had an APL option or something else weird. So I really like the idea of exploring this alternate path. So this is bits of fourth written in fourth? Yeah, so what I have here is, maybe I can show this the actual way it's loaded, but I have a bunch of text and I copy it literally onto the ROM when I program this. And when fourth starts up, it executes all of this. So many of the commands I have, for instance, the commands that create the if then and else statements or the do loop statements. Okay. So more complex control flow than just like jumping between functions. That is all programmed in, in fourth. fourth. And then it's just run at every oh. single boot up. So you have sort of a base that you've written in assembly. Yeah. Then some of it you're actually able to build up in fourth. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating. So you're like able to build. Routines. You're able to actually build the control structures in fourth. Yeah. That's one of the weirdest things about fourth. Wow. 